This holy mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Neil Flesher. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. Blessed are you and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in order to more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things who laid down for the human race the law of work, Graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all wa the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image, in the divine image who created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, God rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. 
they were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we celebrate a wonderful feast day, the feast of St. Joseph, or excuse me, a wonderful memorial, that of St. Joseph the Worker. And in this day, we are bidden by the church to reflect upon the example of Joseph, and not just Joseph as a father, or not Joseph as the protector of the Holy Family, the patron of the Universal Church, no, Joseph as a worker. And that's a very specific focus that the church gives us. We don't know much of anything of, of Joseph as a worker. We know very little of Joseph, period. But all we know as a worker is the scriptures say he was a carpenter. And we know from theological studies that he was likely more than just a carpenter. He was probably more like an all-around construction worker, a laborer. He probably knew how to do many things with his hands to create, to refashion, to form. Joseph, because as a worker, Joseph would have used, utilized that work as a way for him to provide for the Holy Family. But not just that. It wasn't just to provide for Jesus. It wasn't just enough to provide for Mary. Joseph was a worker because this is part of who we are as human beings. We are called to imitate God the Father who worked. Why did we hear from the first reading from Genesis today, from the creation story, when God created man and he gave man dominion over all things? We heard from that because in creation, God crea God, or in the creation stories, we see that God worked in creating things. And what did he do? Well, then after that work, he took delight in everything that he had created. He sat back and he marveled at the goodness and the beauty of all that he had brought into being. We, as human beings, are called to imitate the Father in that. We're called to bring our mind, to bring our soul to bear on the world around us. To unite our intellect to our body, what we can do with our hands. You see, that's the beautiful power of work. Work unites the interior person with the exterior person, if I can make such a distinction, all right? It unites our soul with our body in such a way that the output of our work becomes something beautiful. It's not just a task. It's something that's done by the human person. So many of you have been working from home, uh, or perhaps some of you haven't been working at all, like in a paid job. I'm sure you've still had work around the house. Perhaps some of you have continued to go to work. I know a number of people have continued to still work at their jobs. And some people have been placing themselves in harm's way by working. In healthcare, for example, or in those essential businesses, right? Making certain that we have what we need. Friends, on this day, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, number one, let's pray in thanksgiving for all of those who have placed themselves in harm's way to ensure that life continues somewhat like it was before. So think about that when you go next time to like Dylan's or you go to pick up uh, some things that you need. Think about all of those people who made that possible. Think about that when you need to go to the doctor's office or to your dentist or if you have to go to the hospital. All of those people that went there really not knowing what was going to happen and they did anyway. Think about those people who work in our hospitals who they don't have anything to do with the healthcare aspect, but they're the support personnel. They're the ones who are going in afterwards and they're cleaning up the rooms, they're sanitizing the rooms, they're cleaning the hallways. All of those people they didn't have to go and do that. So first, on this memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, let's pray for all of those who have worked for our good. And let's pray that the Lord might 
extend his blessings over them, that he might cover over them with his loving mantle of mercy. Secondly, our own work. First of all, let's pray that we recognize that work is indeed a blessing. And work is something that we need. It's so easy in this modern day for us to want to push work to the side and just seek diversion, just to seek something that helps us to relax a little bit or whatever. That stuff is important, okay? We need to relax at certain points. We need to have some kind of fun in our lives. But we also need to work. We need to do so out of imitation of the Father. We need to do so because work completes the human person. It helps us to become the person that we've been created to be. We need to do so because we have been called to work in this world, to bring about a better world, to bring about at least a better little sphere of influence, if you will. Friends, by our work, not only are we sanctified as as a human person, but we can bring good things into this world. So pray pray for yourselves today. Let us pray all for ourselves that we might recognize that our work is a good thing. And that even though we might not want to do it, we should. And we should do it well. So that's the final thing I want to say. When you work at what you do, strive for excellence. Why? Not because you want to make your employer more money. Not necessarily because you want to get the promotion. Although that's not a bad thing in and of itself. Strive for excellence in your work because this is what a Christian should do. We should want to do the best job that we can do at what we do. Why? Because it's God who's given us the ability to work in the first place. This has touched us, I think, us priests, in a very particular way, as as it has many people. Without our public duties for Mass and a a reduction in the sacraments, a reduction in, in prayer groups and all of our meetings, it's been easier, friends, to feel that temptation to kind of sit back on our laurels. But we shouldn't because we're supposed to work. We glorify God in our work. So strive for excellence in your work. And if you strive for excellence in your work, know that that is a way of giving thanks to God, giving glory to God, because he's given you the capacity to work in the first place. Thanks be to God. And may St. Joseph the worker Pray for us, intercede for us, so that we might imitate the Father in our work. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for all who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, and eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who is conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Alleluia. Friends, open your hearts to the heart of Christ as we pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, since this is the first Friday, we will have the uh, devotions to the Sacred Heart of Our Lord immediately following Mass. We'll have a short time of Eucharistic exposition, and then we will pray the chap. Uh, excuse me. We will pray the Litany of the Sacred Heart. You're welcome to stay tuned in and to pray with us during this time. We will end by 1 p.m. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
If you're still joining us on the live stream, you may kneel at this moment. O salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, dar rober fer auxilium, unitrino que domino, sit sempiterna gloria, Qui vitam sine termino, nobis donet in patria. Amen. Pray now the litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. The response is, have mercy on us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mother, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, substantially united to the Word of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of infinite majesty, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, holy temple of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of charity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, vessel of justice and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abyss of all virtues, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praises, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, king and center of all hearts, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom dwells all the fullness of the divinity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of whom the Father is well pleased, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of whose fullness we have all received, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and abounding in mercy, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, rich unto all who call upon thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, atonement for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, filled with reproaches, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our offenses, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, made obedient unto death, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance, have mercy on us. 
Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who hope in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. Let us pray. O Almighty and Eternal God, look upon the heart of thy dearly beloved Son, and upon the praise and satisfaction he offers thee in the name of sinners, and for those who seek thy mercy. Be thou appeased and grant us pardon in the name of the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Sacred heart of Jesus, I believe in thy love for me. We pray, offer this prayer for priests to our Lord, remembering that St. John Vianney said, that the priesthood is the love of the heart of Christ. Lord Jesus, present in the most blessed sacrament and living perpetually among us through your priests, grant that the word of your priests may be only your words, that their gestures may be only your gestures, and that their lives be a true reflection of your life. Grant that they may be men who speak to God on behalf of his people and speak to his people on, on, of God. Grant that they may be courageous in service, serving the church as she asks to be served. Grant that they may be men who witness to eternity on our own time, traveling on the paths of history in your steps and doing good for all. Grant that they may be faithful to their commitments, zealous in their vocation and mission, clear mirrors of their own identity, and living the joy of the gift they have received. We pray that your Holy Mother Mary, present in your life, may be ever present in the life of your priests. Amen. Friends, we take a moment now to pray. We pray for a few minutes in silent adoration.
if you're still with us and you are able, please kneel in your homes as we prepare ourselves for benediction. Antum ergo sacramentum, venere mocenui, et anticum documentum, no voce dat vitui, rest et fide supplementum, sensum defectui. Genitori genitoque, laus et jubilatio, salus honor virtus quoque, sit et benedictio, procedenti abutroque, comparsit laudatio. Amen. You have given them bread from heaven, alleluia, having within it all sweetness, alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We pray together now the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. <clears throat> Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.
I invite you to stand. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting.